Today on The Hookup, I'm gonna teach you everything that you need to know to get quickly and easily started with Halloween projections like this, 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 and even this. And then stick around to hear how I gave it the home automation flair by using Node-RED to play specific animations based on motion detection, and how I synced up my six cheap projectors to my house LEDs using free and open source software to tell a story and let these projected ghosts move from one projector to the next. Right up front, let's talk about cost so you can decide if this is something that you're really interested in. For me, each projection location costs roughly $110, which includes $60 for a projector, $20 for animation, $20 for a projector mount, and about $10 for screen material. Some other costs you might add include waterproof outdoor enclosures, extension cords, Raspberry Pis, memory cards, LEDs, motion sensors, and various cables, but $110 is a good starting off point. This video is sponsored by HolidayCoro.com. Holiday Coro is one of the largest light show vendors in the United States, and it's your one-stop shop for everything that you need for a holiday light show. Every single neighborhood needs that one house that has awesome holiday lights, so why not have it be yours? Whether you want to start small with a couple of corrugated plastic snowflakes or jump right into a mega tree, Holiday Coro has you covered with individual parts or pre-assembled ready-to-run kits. Check out HolidayCoro.com using the link down in the description to support this channel. As for those projectors, you've got two main options that won't break the bank. An inexpensive new LED projector or a used lamp-based projector. Lamp-based projectors have unmatched brightness with the trade-off of needing to replace the bulb every couple thousand hours. If you want to do whole house projection mapping, a used lamp projector is probably your best option. Unfortunately, when you buy used off eBay, you're probably going to get a bulb that's on its last leg, which not only means that the light is going to be dimmer and the colors won't be as accurate, but it also means that it's more likely to just quit on you, and a replacement bulb will likely cost you more than you paid for the projector in the first place. Inexpensive LED projectors, on the other hand, will last tens of thousands of hours and are plenty bright for a single window, wall, or floating illusion, but are definitely not bright enough to do a whole house projection. But that's not what we're going to focus on today, so check out my video from last week or the links down in the description for my recommendations for cheap LED projectors. Next, let's talk about projection material, or what you're going to project onto. The material you choose will depend mostly on the effect that you're looking for, and where you can place your projector. Window projections are the most forgiving and the easiest to do, so they're a good place to start. A white sheet works fine as a screen, but you can also buy cheap projection screens on Amazon that have grommets on the side to make installation easier. The issue with using a white screen is that they don't have the best contrast, and the biggest problem for me is that at night you can typically see through them a little bit, which is not the best for my master bathroom window. For my window projections, I chose to take it one step further, and I ordered some gray rear projection material from an online retailer called Carl's Place, and then I cut it to size for my windows. It's a little more expensive, but it's well worth it in my opinion. The next projection effect is what Atmos Effects calls hallusions, because they aren't quite holograms, which are three-dimensional. Instead, these are floating projections made with transparent fabric. The amount of transparency is going to directly affect how bright the hallusion is, because a more transparent material, the more light will pass through it without forming an image. This is important for two reasons. First, if you have a really dim projector, it might be hard to see the image at all. And second, if there's a wall or any solid object in front of the hallusion, the light's going to pass right through that transparent material and create an image on the wall. On the left, you can see ordinary white sheer curtains, and on the right, you can see what it looks like with gray tulle. The tulle is really delicate and almost completely see-through, which makes the hallusion really look like it's floating. However, because it's letting so much of the light through, it causes the projector to also light up the tree in my front yard. I actually think this effect is pretty cool, so it works out for me, but if you have a wall behind your hallusion, it's definitely not going to work because the image is just going to show up right on the wall. The sheer curtains make a much brighter image, with the trade-off of being visible both at night and during the day. I hung both the materials the same way with a curtain rod at the top, and then I used staples to pull the fabric tight against the bench holding my pumpkins in front of them. But yard stakes would work just as well if you don't have anything to anchor it to at the bottom. For my hallusion and window projections, I used videos from Atmos FX, which are pricey but really high quality. If you just want to try something out, you can search for free stuff on YouTube by just looking for videos with black backgrounds, and you'll find plenty of things to test with. The third projection type is pretty unique to Atmos FX though, and that's their 3D FX models and their pumpkin projections, where you project onto a physical form to bring it to life. Pumpkins are pretty straightforward. You just set up a single pumpkin or a pumpkin trio and point a projector at it from about two to three feet away, and then you're all set. 
The last type of illusion is the 3D effects videos made by Atmos FX, and they're made to be used with their inflatable form, but it was already sold out by the time that I started making Halloween decorations. So instead, I bought a cheap inflatable punching bag for kids, spray painted it white, and then wrapped it in some projection material. I put a layer of sheer white first, and then a layer of gray tool to give it a more ethereal look. I used an old plastic shelf that I was throwing away to give it a bit more height, and then I laid some bricks on the base to keep it in place. Of the 3D effects files that I've purchased, and I don't have all of them, the Boo Crew is definitely the most forgiving to project, while the humanoid forms seem to be lined up pretty perfectly to look convincing. Still, when you hit that sweet spot, it's pretty awesome. As I mentioned before, the Atmos FX stuff can be pretty pricey, and I've spent a not insignificant amount of money trying out different animations. And what I can tell you is that by far the best bang for your buck if you're just starting out is the $39 Phantasms package, which gets you four different 1080p models with window projections, wall projections, illusions, and 3D effects versions. So for one package, you can pretty much decorate your whole house and make a bunch of different animations. For any of these projections, one of the most important aspects will be your projector placement. Since almost all LED projectors come with a standard quarter 20 mount on the bottom, the easiest way to get perfect positioning is to buy a camera tripod with a tilting head. This way you can just adjust the height and angle exactly. But for me, having these decorations up for about a month, it was important to have them more out of the way. For my front door projection, I'm using a camera wall mount, and for my master bathroom window, I bought a suction cup mount designed to hold cameras on cars while they're moving. Both of these mounts have been up for about two weeks now, and I've had zero issues. If you don't have enough room or you can't quite get the angle you need, you can use the mirror trick to make your own short throw projector. Any cheap mirror will work, like this $5 one from Walmart. Just put your mirror as far back as your space allows, and then change the position of your projector until you're satisfied with the image that gets created. It makes sense that shining a projector onto a mirror would reduce the brightness, but in practice, I can't really tell the difference between a projection made with and without a mirror, and it gives you significantly more freedom in the placement of your projector. For placement outside, things get a little more complicated. Depending on where you live, you'll need to judge the potential for weather exposure yourself, but in Florida, I know that I definitely need to at least protect my projectors from rain. For the projector that creates the illusions on my front porch, I decided that the roof would provide enough protection, so I just made a small angled mount out of plywood to put the projection in the right place. However, out in the yard and on the roof, each projector had to be put inside of a plastic storage container with a large hole cut out of the bottom for a fan. For my roof projector, I ran an extension cord into the weatherproof box using a watertight cable gland, but that was before I decided that I needed to make a large hole in the bottom for a fan, and if I were going to do it again, I think I would just drill another hole in the bottom to pass the extension cord through instead of using a cable gland. This projector also has two USB ports, so I used one to power the 5 volt USB fan and the other to power a Raspberry Pi Zero, which is optional and we'll talk about that later. The roof mount is as simple as it can be, just some quick angled cuts on plywood and a couple of holes that only go halfway through for the makeshift screw feet to rest in. In my yard, I wanted to use my 12 volt projectors since they're more likely to come into contact with people and water. I powered both of them with a large 12 volt power supply that I used for the rest of my holiday LEDs and that also meant that I could just use standard 12 volt computer fans for their ventilation. To conceal these projectors that would have otherwise been very visible, I made a tombstone out of pink foam by more or less following a tutorial from the YouTuber Van Oaks Props. And at this point, my decorations could have been finished. I've got all my projectors in place and my screen material hung, so I could just load up my video effects onto the projectors using a USB drive or an SD card and play them on a loop. But as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I'm kind of an automation nerd, so this is where the real fun actually started for me. And in the script for this video, I originally included an entire how-to for every step of the setup, but it was like 25 minutes long, full of home automation and light show jargon, and frankly, not very exciting. So instead of wasting my time editing 25 minutes of video, I'm going to show you the final results of all my automations and post all the how-to stuff on my website with pictures and descriptions. First, each projector is connected to a Raspberry Pi Zero running a program called Falcon Player Pi. Falcon Player allows for synced playback of video and sequencing of LEDs, so I can have different animations playing on different projectors to sort of tell a story. Like this one, where the Atmos FX Wraith is able to climb out of a portal that's generated by the 3D FX Poltergeist. But when the portal closes, he gets sucked back into the netherworld. Or in this sequence, the siren runs away from the Wraith, and then when the Wraith crushes her soul, she returns but only as her evil self. I'm also using a motion sensor tucked under my gutter to trigger a jump scare on my front door projector whenever somebody gets close enough, and I'm using person detection from my driveway security camera to trigger the storytelling mode of the 3 dfx model. Two awesome home automation programs called Node-RED and Home Assistant allow all these systems to connect together and keep the animations in sync. Again, if you're interested in a more step-by-step how-to, check out the article on my website, but be prepared to dive down a very deep but very enjoyable rabbit hole.
Thank you so much to my patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel. And if you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoy this video, please hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.